All right, folks, we got a 14 Toyota. It's the Prius. Driving favorite car this morning? Yeah, gonna go pick up some chicks, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks. Find a little dogger down here. We'll get our Altel plugged in. Today we're using the MS906 Pro because we're professional-ish. Oh, it just stalled. Let's see. I'll let this thing get all hooked up. We'll scan it. We'll see. They probably have two different issues. Or at least that's what I told the lady because um, usually the you know ABS traction light doesn't have anything to do with you know the mechanical brakes as far as noise, brakes grinding. So sometimes when people's lights come on they get what I call hypersensitive. ABS light comes on and all of a sudden, you know, we hear all these things. So keep that in mind I'll let this thing get loaded we'll see if it's having an issue with a wheel speed sensor or something perhaps foreign object attached to the tip of left rear speed sensor <laughs> that's pretty specific fella uh, it's a left rear speed sensor circuit so let's just go back into some live data here or go into some live data now sometimes this could be a result of a grinding in the back which was grinding like tons of metal shavings, we'll say, and they got all over the speed sensor. And then let me, I'm just gonna graph all these. So well, actually we'll just graph the left rear and the right rear. I use my other finger. I'll slow this baby down. All right. Pew, pew. Alright, we got her in drive, do we? Says it is. Now I've hit too many buttons here. <laughs> what a jerk. I got yourself up, you can see the ABS brake, traction. We're moving a little bit, don't see anything happening there in the left rear. So let's take a little tour around town. Anything coming? Anything? Negative. So it doesn't look like we've got any action from the left rear. Stand by. Nothing going on there, let's use some breakage. I right, definitely hear some grinding. I don't know if it's metal to metal grinding or not, but it's definitely some grinding. We'll probably just peel all four wheels off unless some of the brakes are obviously new. So we'll just start here on the front, now the wheels are off. Have a look-see. Around here, it seems that the uh, Priuses tend to rot off the brakes, everything seizes up in them with the regenerative braking and stuff. They just don't get used a lot and then add a little salt to the mix and all the rest is history usually. So it appears 
But there's lots of brake pad here. Let's see if they're seized up. That one's not seized up. This one's slightly seized. Not terrible. Looks like there must be a rust ridge inside that rotor. Pretty fair amount of rust build up there. That's quite a bit. Not terrible. Pins are pretty stiff. Yeah, they're pretty stiff. It could, at the very least, use a brake service. You know, get the pins freed up, get the pads freed up, take the hardware off. You know, sandblast to get everything kind of moving free again. Uh, the pads themselves are. I would say, well, we can measure them, but they're probably at least, you know, 60 to 70 percent left. Let's see if we have any rust jacking, because that's always a, a dilemma. And there is. It's just starting to peel the edges of the pads back here. Let me see if I can give you a good look at that. And this, according to the comment section, seems to be quite regional, which stands to reason because, you know, a lot of the folks down south don't get the rust. But you can see here on the edge of the pad, you see how I can stick the tip. In there of our little pry driver I'm trying to find my words this morning I'm so a little tired <laughs> but what happens is as we demonstrated in one of our last videos is you start to get pad separation so the rust builds up behind the friction material and behind the backing plate and then eventually it pushes the whole friction material off so you can see with very little effort you know you can start lifting up that friction material and then what happens is the whole piece of friction material falls off the backing plate. It's a super common thing here in the Northeast. Uh, we call it rust jacking. Uh, whether that's a typical or uh, the official name or not, I don't know. Uh, there are a few pad manufacturers that, that claim they make a backing plate that prevents that. Unfortunately, they're some of the squealiest brakes on the planet. <laughs> I won't tell you who does it, um, but it's kind of ironic with their name. Uh, so anyhow, Obviously, I would recommend a customer, you know, to do the front brakes simply based on, you know, rust jacking because that's going to get you. Make sure our caliper goes back in. It felt like it was. Phenolic piston, so they're not rusty. Felt like it compressed beautifully. So I'll stick that there. We're going to get a caliper hook so you guys don't freak out. Mostly just want to check the caliper on the side. <laughs> a stone fell out of there. Do you guys hear that? We mostly want to check this side just to see if the caliper is intact. Because if it's getting front brakes, you know, obviously you're doing both sides. The caliper seems nice. I guess we can push it in all the way. The caliper seems nice and free. are quite stiff on this side also. This pad over here is rust jacking real bad. Let me show you. Enhance. Enhance. So there you go. Now you can see it. So it's that separation right there. Scrape that so junk out of there. Whoa! Hang on there, fella. Kind of giving you guys a little hug, but you can see how the pad is quite loose off the backing plate. See what I'm saying? Not supposed to be like that, fella. Immense, immense. Feel the pads off here. I'm 98% certain this guy's gonna fix it. He usually has us do his work when necessary. But I just wanted to show you that. If this was just a you know Joe Schmo customer I didn't know, I wouldn't have stuck a screwdriver in there to prove it to you in case we got denied on the repairs. But you know, you guys can see. Old Jack got in there, <laughs> old Mr. Meehoff. And you can see the rust build up and where the friction material was adhered to it. But I guess that's it, fella. 
peel our bracket off over of right here. I see this uh, pin here, this boot appears to have a tear in it. Let's see if we can wiggle that out a little bit. Oh, yes, uh, so that pin or that pin boot has a rip in it, so that would also need to be replaced because you don't want rust and junk getting in these babies. So I'll see about getting a pin boot kit too. Well, there's nothing ground metal to metal in the back that I could see, just looking through the wheels here. I mean, the brake orders are solid rust. We're just gonna take, obviously the rear is, is getting brakes. I'm going to take, looks like maybe, it might be 14 mil too. We're gonna pull the brackets right off and then we'll check the pad. We don't care if they're seized up or anything right at this point, I guess. See if we can get these brackets off. They're 14 mil also. At least I thought they were. 14 mil plus a little rust. Or my eyes are deceiving me. Come on, baby. Yep, they're 14 mil, but they're pretty crusty. Let's see if we get the socket worked on there. I'm gonna try to get it on all the way because if you start pulling and then it strips ahead, the then you're in trouble. Then you're in big trouble, dude. Just tiny little suckers that hold those caliper brackets on. Maybe a 10 millimeter bolt. There's those two. There. Yeah, there's the inside. There's the outside. Pretty crusty. Oh, not really seized up there. Too terrible. Anyways, I think this thing's low mileage. 70 some thousand miles on it, so I'm sure it sits a lot. Uh, well, I don't want to take brake pads off apparently here. The hardware is kind of jammed up here. There we go. So there's our pad still, you know, fair amount of pad on the back. Let's see, old Jack hasn't gotten after these babies. A little bit of unevenness in the wear, but not too terrible. Feel the hardware here. Pins move, boots aren't ripped. We just need to check our brake caliper. These are screwies. Um, before we push that in, I am gonna take a, a brush. I don't know what the heck's on it. Got my little screwdriver here. Feels like something other than grease. It almost feels, looks like silicone. Maybe some of that brake anti-squeal stuff, whoever did the last brake job on it. Yeah, let's get that cleaned off and then we'll see if that turns in. There, you happy now? Apparently I forgot the brake clean riff in a couple videos, so some people got a little pissed off about it. So they were gonna quit. Right, that looks pretty good. Beautiful. Grab our caliper windy uppy tool. It's the four pronger. Get her started in there. Make sure when you're doing this, if you see your boot start twisting, 
you gotta kind of you gotta calm down, dude. Spray a little brake clean on it. That usually makes it slippery. If it's still acting like it wants to wad up, you'll have to stick a pick gently underneath it. Don't jam the boot. Maybe spray a little silicone spray there, and then start winding it back. Usually, usually once you crack it loose, it spins in relatively well without binding up there. As far as the boot's concerned. Looks like the piston's going in, okie dokie. All right, now I don't remember if these pads had a tab on the back of them, but we're gonna line it up just in case, put the slot at the very bottom. There's actually two slots. There we go, just in case the back of the ear has a little titty on it that it needs to line up with. I don't believe these do, but just good practice to make sure that's sitting in there like that. Now you can hear crap inside that bearing. So I couldn't hear anything with the tires on it originally spinning it because the brakes were so noisy. But these Toyotas use a cage on the back side of the bearing. You see the bearings are super rusty. And a lot of times rust and junk inside that cage breaks apart and that's what gets jammed up on the speed sensor. So you can hear this one. Yeah, it sounds like it's all on the back side there, but this isn't this is the wheel that was working, so. Same story on the driver's side. Just Rust, lots of rust. Piston pushed in fine. Extra noisy bearing over here. As far as crap getting in the back there. This is the side we're having a problem with. Might be the foreign material on the tip, so to speak. However, on these cars and Toyotas in general, I've seen problems with these electrical connectors in the back. Getting all crappy. Let's have a gander. You know me and my big nose. I can usually smell a broken wire. I just gotta figure out how to get the connector undone here. I thought these were the connectors I've seen break before, but perhaps not. Open that up. I thought it was these Toyotas I've done some of where they break right here at the connector. I mean, like at the last inch, the last quarter inch, usually. I thought I'd seen it. Okay, so that's just a protective little case that goes over. Oh, you guys can't see crap. That's good. But we need to unplug it anyway, so let's get it unplugged. Perhaps. Maybe. <laughs> Let me get another screwdriver up here. See if I can't hit the release tab on it and then. There we go. There's that. Now we can have a little look here. inside here. Which that looks good. Like I say, it is noisy. So there's definitely something inside that tone ring making noise. The female half of the connector looks good. Let's give a little tug on these wires here. Now maybe you guys can see. I take a glove off. Like I say, I've seen it on these Toyotas that suckers will rot out right underneath the weather packing. It's really bizarre, but I've ran across it a couple times. I just want to give a little pull. Nothing too excessive. I mean, it's like 24 gauge wire here. It's pretty tiny stuff. That one feels good. Usually if they're broke, they'll, they'll just pop right out. And that one feels good. So they feel, they feel good, I guess. When that goes all together, you cannot see the release tab. So anyhow, I'm gonna put this back together. And then we need to find out if this bearing is junk as far as the ABS goes. And I'll show you a quick 
quick and dirty way to do that without you know a scope or checking voltages or anything like that it's super simple we'll just jump this side to that side spin that wheel if it reads up on the scan tool then we know the wiring's good and the bearings junk and in case you're wondering that's how this sits inside of I'll try to do this way keep my hands out of your way so the connector here wire goes up on top and then you thread the wires down to there the connector sits in here the release tab is right there Let's see if i can get this I'm trying to do it where you guys can see it here but come on baby get that around like that here we go and the whole thing will click back together like i said there your release tab is is right underneath it to get it you know while it's in the vehicle you just got to get a pocket screwdriver flick these tabs loose and that'll come apart on you so anyhow for what it's worth that's that's that fellas actually i think the other side's noisier ran a jumper wire from this connector runs down there under the car you can see it loops under there that comes all the way around and i just plugged it in back sorry about that plugged it in the back of this wheel bearing keys on set our scan tool here technically when we turn this wheel see yep we should have speed signal on the left side which we do so i'm turning it all herky jerky but i guess the the point being that that proves as i crank this that the wiring is good all the way up to the car we didn't have to have any kind of fancy tools pull our jumpers and and that's it so you got to be careful though active wheel speed sensors can be quite difficult to diagnose uh you know with a scope scope and a good active wheel speed sensor piece of cake uh they're super easy toyota is not a great example because toyota has a very logical practical setup where it doesn't disable that circuit when there's a fault now when you're working on a lot of the domestics <coughs> cough cough gm chrysler they will typically kill that entire circuit when you set a code and then when you clear the code the circuit doesn't come back immediately you have to key off for a certain amount of time so i find that this is the easiest way <clears throat> excuse me the easiest way to not get led astray down the rabbit hole of i need a new abs module because i don't have my 11 volts back here like i say toyota's pretty good if it doesn't work everything here stays alive but active wheel speed sensors are are difficult to diagnose on some makes I bypass all the rigmarole by simply doing this. If I have one that works, just bypass it, clear the code, wait, you know, two, three minutes, turn the key back on, reread the codes. It should read for the opposite side now, you know, spin your wheel and see if it works. But um, definitely understand some of the logic and the algorithm behind some of them if you're having a hard time. Uh, these work on an extremely low amount of current. Like, I don't know where they are. They're, 20 or 30 milliamps of variation that they see. So when you're using your scope, you got to AC couple it and then you know, really zoom in on the, on the waveform to see it. So that's that, needs a bearing. The AES Wave uh, U test kit is my go-to kit for these connectors. Of course, I've added a bunch of other stuff to it also. And uh, it's a super, super great bit of kit. Uh, don't share it with anybody if you have it, because you share it with your buddies, they'll destroy it. Or at least if they, you do share it with them, make sure they don't destroy it. Go jamming these connectors on. Some of these are very tiny and quite fragile. So, you know, be cautious if you're sending, uh, you know, high voltage down, high current rather. <laughs> Last but not least, I want to make sure that our parking brake works here. You guys see the piston popping in and out. I checked that side over there. That side works good. Uh, the only other thing I see is the two rear brake lines here that go to these flex hoses are about a pedal pump from popping. Uh, they're about as big around as my thumb and super rusty. So I'm going to suggest that they do both those rear. I don't want to touch it because it's going to break, but both those two short sections of brake line, pads, rotors, I would definitely recommend doing both bearings just on the account of the noise that they're making of course this one's junk you know the speed sensor tip is probably broke off that one over there you guys heard that one that sucker's pretty noisy too uh you know it's up to them you know pay me now or pay me later i guess so caliper's good park and brakes seem to work this concerns me our brake line's about ready to pop there it's just a short section line it goes down to this flex line 
So that sucker's pretty nasty. These Toyotas, when you blow a brake line, boy, it just empties them too. This one's not as bad. Yeah, we're hooked on down there. It's not as bad. I guess probably if we're doing one, we just do them both, but I'll leave that up to the customer. Definitely this wheel bearing, pads, rotors in the rear. Now guys are freaking out because why don't I turn rotors? Let's have a look here. So when these rotors start to delaminate like this, if you put this on the brake lathe, by the time you turn it down to good material, it's pretty well non-existent. Plus, brake rotors are quite inexpensive. We don't turn the fronts, the vented rotors, because typically in the middle of the vents, or the vents here, they're just solid rust. I mean, these things just crumble apart, so it's it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, you know, the, what the salt and the corrosion and stuff does here, but we're always way better off just replacing them. That's why 90% of the shops around here sold their lays years ago. So that's an easy sale. Guy doesn't even want to estimate. So if it's broke, fix it. I uh, wants to do both the rear wheel bearings, even though the one isn't technically failed yet. Uh, he's pretty wise about that. Wants to do both the rear brake lines, which I think are a great idea, even though they're not leaking currently. He wants to fix those, and then of course the rear pads and rotors. And then on the front, we're gonna do the caliper pins, bushings, the pin boots, and then just pads and rotors. And I think what we'll do is we'll split this up into a couple videos, that way it doesn't run on so long, like my explanation of things at some points where it just goes on and on and on. So stick around, we'll break it up. We'll do the front in the video, we'll do the back stuff, check it out. Stay tuned, subscribe, the bell, everything. Otherwise, you don't even know when we put those videos out. You can find us on the socials, the Insta, the Facebook. You guys know what to do. Just more viewers. We didn't do anything, but anyhow, thanks for watching.